Hi there and welcome to today's tutorial on population density. Okay, in today's tutorial I'm going to talk to you about population density and we're going to look at two case studies. Um, one for high population density in a developing country and the other one in a, in a low population um, density in a developing country as well. Um, just remember to check out my website examrevision.ie and please 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 guys can you subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. So just uh, recapping one on population density. Population density refers to the average number of people living in a square kilometer. Okay, um, and we're going to look at some of the the problems with high population density. And some of the pro problems with high population density is, um, it can lead to overcrowding, it can lead to a shortage of clean water, a lack of open space for people to 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 to, to do um to play and to have recreational time and to build houses and so on, and it can lead to a lot of pollution. I'm just going to add in one more there, and that is um, the spread of disease. So the disease spreads usually rapidly when you've got a high population density. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is the problems with low population density. And the problem with low population density, um, we've looked at this already um, when we looked at the west of Ireland, is that it can lead to low marriage rates, um, the abandonment of agricultural land, and you can be cut off... Um, Politically and economically, so political and e economic isolation. Okay, so we're going to look at um, a case study today, and we're going to look at the case study we're going to look at is Calcutta in India. Okay, and this is for high population density, and we're going to look at some of the factors um, and some of the problems with high population density in Calcutta. So Calcutta is a mega city. A mega city is when the population exceeds ten million people. And the population density, as we said, it's a very high population density. And currently it stands at 25,000 uh, per square kilometre. So that means for every 20, uh, for every square kilometre, there's 25,000 people. Okay, so an enormous amount of people for such a small area. So why did the population of Calcutta rise so rapidly, which created this huge population density? Um... One of the reasons was that many migrants and refugees uh, fled here during times of conflict and famine. Uh, poverty experienced in rural areas uh, made people leave the rural areas and move to the urban area of Calcutta in the hope for a better life. Uh, facilities and services that are found in the city, um, which are often aren't found in the rural areas. And the really high birth rate contributes to Calcutta's high population density. Okay, so if you want to take down these points, uh, please do. Uh, it shows why the population of Calcutta um, rapidly increased and why the population density is so high. Just one thing to note, um, if somebody is called a bus tea, the bus tees, that's when migrants, um, the name given to migrants who move from rural areas to, Cal to Calcutta and they live in shanty towns on the edge of the city of Calcutta. So, some of the problems that Calcutta uh, face because of high population density uh, is exactly the same as what we covered uh, and the problems that happen in any uh, place where there's high population density. Um, they've got a lot of overcrowding, they've got a sh huge shortage of clean water in Calcutta, there's a huge lack of open, air sp open space, um, pollution is really severe in Calcutta and disease and spread of disease is rampant in Calcutta. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about each of these now. Um, so overcrowding, this is a major problem in Calcutta. And it's putting huge pressure on available services and resources that they have in Calcutta because of the amount, it's just the sheer volume of people that are in there in such a small area. There's also migrants who do not even have a busty dwelling. So they don't even have, they don't even live in the shanty town or a place that they can, that they can sleep at night. Instead, they live on the streets. Uh, which, which are known as pavement dwellers. The second one, the shortage of clean water. This again is a huge problem um, in Calcutta. This basic service of, uh, of not having water uh, is a huge problem in Calcutta. And because of this, many people are becoming uh, ill and getting sick and are dying in Calcutta because of the lack of clean water. In Calcutta, there is a lack of sanitation facilities, um, so people unfortunately don't have places where they can, they can 
use like toilets as we would have. They have to just um go to the toilet on the streets, and of course, this is going to lead to even poor, even worse uh, sanitation where the where the waste is going to run into the water, and that's going to uh, dirty the, the the water, the very limited amount of water that they have within Calcutta. Um, sewage, like I said, it's it's a huge problem, and the sewage like all over all over the streets. Um, there's no regular waste disposal or collection collections where we'd have collection bins. Lack of open space in Calcutta. This high population density results in every available space being used. And um, migrants here often end up living uh, in busties, which are little shanty towns. Uh, the expansion of these busty towns into the countryside means that there's little space for recreational areas. Pollution is a huge problem um, because of the lack of sanitation, because there's just the sheer volume of people in the, within this such a small space. And disease is rampant. Um, Calcutta is known for the spread of disease and um, the huge in infestation of uh, rats in Calcutta and there's just so much problems and so much disease and it's spread so quickly because of the lack of infrastructure and services that they have within Calcutta. Okay, so we've now talked about the problems um, that we find in Calcutta and the problems that we have because of the high population density. What are the solutions or if any, um, and are some of these being put into place in Calcutta? Um, some of the, the solutions that, that that would need to be made in, in the future is maybe, and that, you could, could, that could be made, is that it could improve education, um, improve sanitation, so have proper sewage systems and toilets, um, so sanitation can improve, so that will reduce the spread of disease, improve the fresh water supply, so make it more readily available and make water, uh, water clean and not have the dirty water that that they that they they do have. Improve facilities and services. Educate people on family planning so we don't have a uh, really high birth rates um, in Calcutta, and to reduce or stop the rural to urban migration where people are actually leaving the rural area, um, in hope and thinking that they actually will have a better life in urban in the urban area of Calcutta when very often this is not the case. So the next thing we're going to look at is um, another case study, but this time we're going to look at a, a country, Mali, that has a, that has a low population density. So we've already looked at a place, uh, Calcutta in India, that has a high population density. Now we're going to look at a country, Mali, that has a low population density. And we're going to look at some of the problems that, we can, that Mali faces because of the low population density. So Mali is a landlocked country in West Africa. Its population density is only 11 people per square kilometre. So unlike Calcutta, where it was 30, oh sorry, 25,000 people per square kilometre, Mali only has 11 people per square kilometre. And it's one of the poorest countries in the world. Uh, two other things to note is desertification has had a huge uh, impact on Mali. Because of desertification, it's caused many problems for farmers, because the farmland that they previously used uh, for cattle is now turned into a desert. And another thing is that the population is very uneven and scattered. And this adds to the, the problem of low population density in Mali. In Mali, we have two main groups. Okay? And the first one is the Fulani. And they live in the rural villages in the south. And the second one is the Torag. And these are nomadic people who live in the north of Mali. And there's a huge divide between the Fulani and the Torag. So in Mali, um, and just like in any other place that has low population density, the main things that we find is that it have low marriage rates. And low marriage rates is because um, people leave, uh, usually the males leave, and they head in search of work into the more urban areas. And what happens then is there's like a surplus of females in the rural areas and there's a surplus of males in the cities because the males uh, migrate to the urban areas. The second problem that happens is the abandonment of farmland. And this is mainly due to desertification. Desertification is the, the turning of land, um, of maybe farmland into desert. Okay, And it's when land turns uh, from normal land into desert because it gets too arid, it gets too dry, 
and this has led to agriculture becoming uh, infertile and because there's been rainfall shortages and a decrease in vegetation cover over time soils turn to sand and desert spread and many other animals such as cattle die because of the lack of water leaving people hungry and what happens then is people then migrate to the cities the third one is political and economic isolation just like we had in the west of ireland exactly the same three factors again and Mali is definitely cut off from the uh, political and economic world. During the 19th century, uh, Mali was a French colony. During this time, it was exploited and was made difficult to develop and become independent. Because of Mali so isolated, uh, it's made it more difficult uh, because its population is scattered around the country. It's also a landlocked country, so it hasn't got access to a port or transport links is poor. So it's really, really cut off and isolated from the rest of uh, from other economies both and their own economy politically so now we've looked at some of the problems with low population density in Mali now we're gonna look at some solutions that Mali could maybe adapt in the future the first one probably the biggest one is to educate farmers they need to educate and train farmers on how to actually manage farms more effectively the second thing is that they could improve transport links. If they improve transport links between the rural and the urban areas, this would make um, the rural areas more tractable as an investment. And if they made it more tractable, then what they will do is they'll be able to attract, uh, attract industries to the rural areas. If they attract industries, then people will be able to get jobs. This will bring an influx of money into the rural areas. And then people will be able to set up more services and facilities and it'll have a whole knock-on effect and the economy will start to grow. And the very the final one that, that Mali could try to do is to reduce desertification. They can do this by planting trees in belts and by addressing the problems of overgrazing and overcropping to stop the land turning into uh, desert land. But as you can see, these solutions are not very like easy to do they needs the full backing from the government it needs money it needs investment and it it really is difficult for really poor countries such as mali because what happens is it just it's all like a knock-on effect like in developing countries or really poor countries it just end up creates creating more like more problems so if you get like desertification then that leads to food shortages which leads to malnutrition for the people which puts pressure on the already inadequate health system of mali that results in the spread of disease and then eventually a higher child mortality rate. So it's really, really difficult for countries such as Mali when they're so poor and they've got so many problems already. It's just like that domino effect where it actually creates more problems. Okay, and that's it for today um, on this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did enjoy it, can you please, 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 can you subscribe to my YouTube channel and can you leave me some feedback? And also, if you want to keep up to date with the latest uh, news, uh, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram.